turbojet technology was still in its infancy when the Gloucester Aircraft Company developed the Meteor. This was the first British jet-powered aircraft and the only one that the Allies ever sent into combat during World War II. The Meteor had been built to engage in air battles with the Luftwaffe ME-262, the first operational jet-powered fighter aircraft that stunned the Allies when it appeared. But the much-expected confrontation between both jets never happened. Eventually, both were replaced with more modern and efficient planes. However, the Meteor was an excellent combat fighter. It broke several aviation records. The aircraft remained a fundamental part of the Royal Air Force for several years and served successfully in 15 other countries, where it had essential participation in several regional conflicts. In April of 1939, Frank Whittle, inventor of the turbojet engine, made a visit to the Gloucester Aircraft Company. For years, he'd been looking for associates willing to collaborate with his firm, Power Jets, to develop his ideas of jet propulsion. In his visit, Whittle met Chief Gloucester designer George Carter, who was immediately fascinated by his Power Jets W-1 engine. Carter designed several proposals for aircraft that could be powered by the new technology. An understanding was formed between both companies to develop a high-altitude jet bomber. That same year, as the start of World War II brought more attention towards fighter aircraft, the Air Ministry granted Gloucester a contract to design a prototype aircraft that used Whittle's turbojet engines. This collaboration gave birth to the Gloucester E-2839, the first British jet-engined aircraft, which flew for the first time on May 15, 1941. The prototype was so successful that the company continued working on designs for producing a fighter jet, and the Royal Air Force ordered 12 prototypes. The project was extremely sensitive, and during its development, employees referred to it with the codename Rampage. Although its original designation was Thunderbolt, the Republic P-47 of the U.S. Air Force had already been dealt with that name, and so the revolutionary aircraft was called the Meteor. The new jet-powered fighter went through a long period of development, and several prototypes. At first, it was powered by W-2B turbojets, but the thousand pounds of thrust generated by each wasn't enough for the aircraft to take off. Despite this obstacle, the Royal Air Force ordered a hundred aircraft. The Meteor finally became airborne on March 5, 1943, thanks to a pair of Halford H-1 jet engines. But due to low flight endurance, only two prototypes got to fly in that configuration. Another model, powered by the engines produced by Whittle, flew on June 12, 1943, crashed during takeoff less than a year later. Eight prototypes later, the Rolls-Royce W-2B-23 Welland engines were selected for production. They produced 1,700 pounds of thrust each. The Gloucester Meteor was born as a single-seat, all-metal straight-wing jet with a high tailplane. Because the thrust capability of engines was very limited at the time, the aircraft needed an engine mounted on each wing to help it reach its performance objectives. As was standard on all jet fighters after it, the Meteor also had a tricycle landing gear. Mounted on the nose of the plane were four 20mm Hispano cannons. Under the wings, it could also fit up to 16 foot by 3 foot high explosive rockets. The Gloucester Meteor had an outstanding climb performance. It had a sea level rate of climb of 7,500 feet per minute and could reach an altitude of 30,000 feet in five minutes. It also had a service ceiling of 34,000 feet. In the beginning, the jet had a top speed of 410 miles an hour. By the mid-1950s, it was able to reach a speed of Mach 0.81 at 20,000 feet. Pilots described that at such high speeds, the aircraft tended to yaw. This was a common malfunction of earlier jet fighters. Numerous modifications to the Gloucester Meteor to fix the problem were all in vain. Early versions of the fighter jet had a high crash rate, provoked by malfunctioning landing gears, weak brakes, and short flight endurance. Paired with the fact that these early versions didn't come with ejection seats, this caused a high casualty rate. 
While in service with the Royal Air Force, nearly 450 pilots were lost while flying the Meteor. Despite its flaws, the aircraft managed to set several aviation records. In 1946, Group Captain Edward Teddy Donaldson broke a world airspeed record after flying a Meteor F-4 with a speed of 606 miles per hour. The plane also became known after Polish test pilot Janusz Zorkowski performed the Zurabetic cartwheel maneuver, where the aircraft appears to do a stationary vertical cartwheel. Air combat in World War II was dominated by propeller-driven aircraft. Still, the Allies felt threatened by new German jets, like the Messerschmitt Me 262 and the Hinkle HE 162 Salamander. Five months before the Meteor took its first flight, the U.S. flew the Bell P-59 Era Comet twin jet engine fighter. But a poor testing program led to the Era Comet's contract being cancelled, making the Meteor the only jet of the Allies to participate in World War II. The Meteor entered the force on June 1st, 1944, almost at the exact same time as the Me-262, which is widely considered the first operational jet fighter in the world. The design of the Meteor was more attractive than that of the Me-262. Still, in general, the Luftwaffe aircraft was considered superior in performance. The Meteor became the first jet aircraft of the Royal Air Force. On July 12, 1944, 616 squadron received their first Meteors as a replacement for their Supermarine Spitfire 7 piston-powered fighters. A week later, 30 pilots of the squadron had already gained experience with the jet. The jet wasn't immediately deployed to Europe because the Royal Air Force didn't think it would impress the German Luftwaffe. However, after D-Day, Adolf Hitler ordered V-1 buzz bombs to strike over southern England. The Meteors were given their first mission, intercept the elusive weapons sent to terrorize Britain. The V-1's pulse jet engine was able to propel it over 400 miles per hour. This was faster than most piston engine fighters at the time, leaving the Meteor best suited to the task. During these first sorties, most guns either jammed or malfunctioned. The first interception of a missile, for example, was unsuccessful after the cannon at the jet got stuck. This issue forced the pilots to come up with other ways to counter the enemy's missiles. On August 4, 1944, pilot officer Dixie Dean caught up to a V-1, but his cannons malfunctioned. With a tip-and-run tactic, the pilot brought the wingtip of his jet below the wings of the V-1 before pulling up and tipping the V-1 down to Earth. Dean was reportedly reprimanded for damaging his meteor. Later testing of the maneuver proved that an RAF pilot could get close enough to disrupt the airflow over the V-1 and send it tumbling without physically touching it. Minutes later in the same mission, Flying Officer J.K. Roger was actually able to shoot down another V-1 with his cannons to claim the squadron's second kill. Although the Meteor didn't intercept as many flying bombs as expected, in just one month, the unit brought down 13. At the time, the German Me-262 represented a severe threat in the minds of the Allies. The Schwalbe, as it was nicknamed, was faster, carried more weapons, and had better visibility than the Meteor. On October 10, 1944, the 616th Squadron participated in a series of mock attacks on a formation of 100 B-24s and B-17s, as well as 40 Mustangs and Thunderbolts. The exercises revealed that the German jet could likely attack the bombers from above and then dive through the formation to escape. By the end of the year, Gloucester had produced the modified Meteor F Mark III with Derwent engines. This version of the aircraft had extended fuselage for long-range flying and finally had an ejector seat. The Royal Air Force decided that the improved jet was impressive enough to finally be sent to Europe. On January 20th, 1945, the Meteor was deployed to Melsbruck, Belgium, where it was expected to start fighting Germany's Me-262. The jets weren't allowed to fly over German-occupied territory to prevent it from being brought down and captured by the enemies. In the following months, the squadron was moved to different cities around Holland, 
where they carried out ground attacks and armed reconnaissance missions. Unfortunately for the eager pilots, there was no jet-to-jet fighting during the war. Once, a flight of meteors encountered a group of Focke-Wulf FW-190s, but they abandoned the attack. Another time, a force of Arado AR-234 jet bombers attacked the squadron's airfield, but it didn't end in battle. And although the much-anticipated clash with the ME-262 never happened, the Meteor F Mark III became the standard daytime interceptor of the Royal Air Force until 1947. Then it was replaced by the F Mark IV, an improved version of the Meteor, with more powerful Rolls-Royce engines. The aircraft had so much increased power that its wings had to be changed for shorter and stronger ones, which could cope with the high speeds it reached. The jet remained in the RAF after World War II, 1,090 new meteors entered service in case of a Soviet bomber attack. In 1955, the meteor was replaced with more modern planes like the Hawker Hunter, but the aircraft kept flying until 1977. 3,875 meteors were built, more than any other British aircraft of the era, and 890 were lost in service. Over 1,000 Meteor 4s were exported to 15 countries, where they served with great success. In 1947, Argentina became the first country outside of Britain to operate the aircraft. The Meteors saw action in two revolts inside the country and remained in service until 1970. Belgium, Denmark, Egypt, France, and Holland also acquired several Meteors, which were used as interceptors and fighter bombers. By 2018, two Meteors were still being used by the Martin Baker Company as ejection seat test beds. A year later, the last airworthy meteor made its final flight at Bruntingthorpe Airfield in Leicestershire. On its side, the plane had the name of Mr. Frank Whittle, as an homage to the man who started the jet propulsion frenzy. That meteor is now a relic part of the classic British jets collection. Mm-hmm.